All right, so we're recording. It is Tuesday, August 11th, 2015. And tonight we're going to, Megan Taylor's going to share with us um, what we've learned at Summit and some research that she's done on how to share your story, which is a really important part about um, really, if you can master sharing your story with people, then you will connect with people and you will get more people to want to join you in getting fit. So before we do that, I'm going to screen, share my screen and go over announcements and success club. Can you see it? Yes. I'm not going to make it big or crazy because it's just two slides. So first for our announcements, the August promotions, our size obviously is brand new and on sale through the end of August for $140. And it's normally going to be $180. So that's a really big sale. It'll never be $140 again, is my guess. If it ever goes on sale again, it will probably be for $160. And the Kickstart Challenge Pack is on sale for 180, which includes um, the three-day refresh. Does somebody have a question? And the three-day refresh um, challenge pack is also still on, on sale for 140 with Shakeology. So if you have someone that's interested in the three-day refresh, you can tell them they can get it for $10 with their Shakeology because Shakeology by itself is $130, right? So it's a really, really good deal, um, which are great to use for Team Cup, August is Team Cup Month. So um, for the month of August, in addition to getting Success Club, the points that you earn if you're on a team for Team Cup, you earn two points per challenge pack, and that's for a new coach or a new customer. And you earn one point for 90 PB order on HP. And it doesn't have to be Shakeology. I think um, people might not know that, that it doesn't have to be a Shakeology HP order. It can be the new performance line on HP. It can be a Shakeology boost on HP. Anything that adds up to 90 PB on their order counts as one point for you. If mm -hmm. they're a and you also earn, this is special guest cup, Earn one. Oops, Tisha. Are you okay? You fell. <laughs> yeah, my fell. I'm good. Although, recently, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you also earn one point special to the cup for a rank advancement. So, if you are in the cup, if you're on a team and you have a personally sponsored coach that um, reaches their a new rank, then you will get a point. If they are also on the cup, they will also get a point. Tori! So Tori, Tori and May get a point for her rank advancement. And same for um, Kristen, because she's going to be going Emerald this Thursday. And she will get a point, and I will get a point. So that's pretty awesome for just for the cup. It doesn't mean anything else except for just for the cup stuff, but important to know. If you reach 30 points as an individual if your team reaches 30 points, you earn an individual prize if you have five points of those 30. Which, you, I, I mean, anybody know what it is with the tier the one? Selfie stick. Selfie, the selfie stick. stick. Hey, a selfie <laughs> stick. <laughs> and then there's more prizes, the more points you get. All right, so for Success Club so far, these are all of our coaches that have gotten Success Club so far in August, Success Club points. So what this means again as a refresher is you are, it means you are helping someone get in shape. It means you have helped them get started with a new program, new Shakeology, new supplement, new something, and they're getting started on their health and fitness journey and Beachbody is awarding you points for that. So that's what these, killing it. totally, right? That's why she gets three, four, three, three explanation points. <laughs> Um, yeah, at, at some point I'm going to do an interview, I think maybe for the next call, yeah. of Megan, <laughs> basically like, how do you do it? So <laughs> she's been consist consistent, and I know she says that she has ups and downs. No, I do, I do. 
but the numbers don't lie. So we're gonna I'm gonna ask her some questions and kind of dig deep into how she does that. So Leah David, real quick, has two. Tori Morrow has four. Yay, Tori. Shelly Friedel. I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. Is that wrong, Shelly? Thanks for muted. Yay, Shelly! Shelly has two. Tisha has two. Yay, Tisha. Yay. Melinda Stankowski has two. Darcy Kerr has two. Meg has 13, somehow. <laughs> Nina has two. Jeff. Peterhold has two, Linda Bartek has two, Lindsay Elliott has two, Kristen Ryan has four, Danny Bethany has two, Angela Taylor has one, Laura Pease has four, Lisa Polinski has two, Jenny Lynn Molly has four, Amanda Myers has three. She said those are her very first this is her very first month as the coach. I'm really excited for her. Two more points draw and you guys success them. Kristen Hurt has two, and I have four. So that's pretty awesome for being just a little bit over a week into August. So really proud of you guys. Awesome. I'm going to stop my share and hand it over to Meg. All right. So let me see if I can not do this, and everybody can see it okay. Okay, so sharing your story. So this was um, one of the summit presentations that um, Aaron and I heard. It was the second day, and it was with Amy Silverman, and I can't remember the other girl's name, um, Air. You're, you're muted, sorry. Um, it, anyway, the two of them got up on stage, and if anybody knows the elites, um, part of what um, I do, what we all do, is we kind of stalk them. I stalk Amy Silverman, because she's just a really cool elite coach. She has, she's very down to earth, she, um, She's very into nature and she's kind of like a hippie. And I, I met her the night of the Success Club party and she was just the most down to earth person, just super cool. And so she did this amazing talk about sharing your story. Um, and so what I did was I, I took pictures of her PowerPoint presentation and I kind of made them into my own and I took notes with what she was saying and I kind of added them in and, and kind of molded them into this presentation. So this isn't really her words verbatim, but it's pretty much a culmination of her stuff plus some of the stuff that I heard and some other research I've done. So really, the essence of what we do is we share, right? Um, we don't sell, we share, because the products sell themselves. So if we're really going to um, show people what we, the results that we've had, we have to share our stories. And I know that sometimes that can be overwhelming to people, um, especially if you're beginning your journey and you're, you're just starting and you haven't had this amazing transformation yet. So sharing your story can be intimidating. And it took me a very long time, a very long time for me to share my story. And I really haven't shared all of it. Um, and that's the key is not to share all of it all at one time. Um, and as you get more comfortable with um, posting and knowing what sorts of things to say and how to say it is going to just come with time. So it's one of those things where um, don't feel like your posts have to be perfect. They don't. They have to be you because people who know you, your friends, your family, they're going to know when it's you talking versus when it's something scripted. So Amy goes into this great talk about how, how to share your story. And the first step is to determine really what your story is. Everyone has one. Um, how you found Beachbody, what sorts of things you, um, you were exposed to in terms of um, fitness and health and self-esteem and emotions at an earlier age and how that helped to mold you. So your Beachbody story is going to start with one main idea and that's the story starter. It's either going to be one of three things or it can be a combination of them, but usually we just focus on one at a time. So it could be a financial message, it could be a physical message, and it can be an emotional message. So either of those three, when you're getting ready to start a post, think, okay, this is gonna be something about my physical appearance or an emotional side of me or something financial. I haven't really posted a lot of financial stuff. I, um, Amy does, Amy Silverman, but um, I'm still kind of leery about doing that. So, um, you know, I, I kind of model what she does and what some of the other top coaches do, like Melanie Mitro, Anita Myron. I follow what they write in terms of um, their financial posts to kind of get ideas, but that's the one that I feel the, the least comfortable with doing. So you, you, start, you find your story starter, and all of it matters. So, and I really, this is what she said, your trials can become triumphs, your adversity is your advantage, 
turn your mess into your message and your struggle is your story. And I found this too, that being an introvert, a lot of us are introverts and that's okay. But you should also know that introverts are killing it on social media and you can too. So all you have to do is recognize your special strengths and then play on that, but make it your authentic self. So make your posts the way you would write them, what you would say, the pictures you would use, get ideas from other people, other top coaches, but make it your own always. Um, and that's the biggest, that's the biggest issue. And that's the biggest um, point to drive home is to be yourself. So the first thing you start with is the subject, your main subject of what you're going to post. Um, when, when did it happen in terms of whether, let's say it's a physical, you chose physical as your message, like a transformation. When did this start? Um, what was the struggle or what was the issue? And then how did you overcome it? And I started reading um, how to win friends and influence people in the digital age. And the first couple chapters really hit home for me because um, you have to ask yourself when you're getting ready to post, is this going to, you? You, when you choose to post something, it's either going to inspire someone or make them happy or it's going to make them sad. So you have to, or angry. So you have to make the choice, is what I'm posting going to be inspiring and helping others? And if it is, great. If it's something where you're complaining, you're bitching, you know, no, that is going to be a downer. And yeah, there's a place where we can address that, but that's not on social media in a public forum. So all that stuff, yes, it's your story. But if it's going to not inspire someone or make them upset or angry or sad, don't do it. Don't post it. So that's the, the story subject that she mentions is to ask those three questions when you're getting ready to post. And then relate it to your story starter. So she um, said, now, if you were to um, talk about something from the emotional standpoint, have you ever struggled with self-confidence? Talk about that. Talk about how, yes, you did, how, you were, how I was bullied in middle school. You talk about those things um, if you feel comfortable doing it. Um, and then also, if you were to talk about more of a physical transformation, you know, what was your physical transformation? When did it start? Why did you want to transform? And then she also talks about the financial aspect of, of a story starter, which would be, have you ever, ever struggled with debt or living paycheck to paycheck? Have you worked multiple jobs and you still feel like you're treading water financially? So she appeals to that as well from a financial standpoint. Um, okay, so after you've related it to your story starter, now there is the art of storytelling. And this is what I think essential, breadcrumbing. I don't know if anybody's heard of the term breadcrumbing, but you don't want to just word vomit your entire story on people and write a novel. You're going to lose people and they're, they're going to lose interest. You need to break it up into sections. Basically, it's like dropping breadcrumbs. You're, you're giving tidbits of information, tidbits of your story, and you're kind of trailing them along so that when you do start your like page and you do start to get followers, you give little tidbits of information and then they'll keep checking in and following you to kind of see what more they can learn about you. That's the goal. That's what keeps people coming back for more so that you can develop those relationships. So, like I just said, breadcrumbing is where you give little bits of information at a time that lead your audience along with you. Again, too much can overwhelm them. You want to leave people coming back for more to learn about you. And again, don't vomit your entire story on people. Start with that simple script that's going to review the when, the what, and the how. And then just pick one aspect of your entire huge story. Take one aspect of it and share it. Share how you felt emotionally. Share what financial issue you had. Share what physical issue you had. Just that little tidbit is enough to keep, because you know, you can only post about your transformation so many times before people start to learn your story. But if you take a little tiny segment of that, um, how with me, when I was um, pregnant with Gwen, I was on bed rest, I gained a lot of weight, and I was also pre-diabetic, and I was in denial about that. She told me, the, the OBGYN told me, you need to calm down on the, the sugar, because I was eating just a ton of candy. She's like, you have to chill out on that, because you are pre-diabetic. And I remember my mom was with me in the, um, in the um, office with me, because I wasn't able to drive, because I was on very, very restricted 
um, activity. And my mom looked at me and she just kind of was like, I could tell she was disappointed. And I was just like, mom, it's nothing. It's no big deal. Whatever. She's overreacting. And inside I was like, wow, like this is bad. I don't want to be diabetic. I'm a nurse practitioner, diabetes. I don't want to have that. So, and I knew that I was in control of that. And that made me feel bad about myself that I had let myself go. So that is kind of something that I could talk about at a later time when I feel comfortable talking about it publicly, but people can relate to that. People have been pregnant and have had gestational diabetes and, you know, they may, they may feel a fit with that. So um, again, develop your short stories um, to share with different audiences and then have a clear beginning and ending and then go back to your topic about how life has changed for you and how you've overcome um, those obstacles. Okay, so quick tips. This is a really good um, tip that uh, Amy gave, and I really liked it, is know your audience, but talk or post as if you are talking to one person. Think of one person who you specifically want to reach. It could be um, a hypothetical person, or it could be actually someone that you know that you really want to communicate with that to reach because you feel like you could very much help them. So pretend as if you're talking to that person one on one and post the way you would talk to them to try to relate to them. Believe your story matters because it does. It absolutely does. And you matter. And then be intentional with your story and then create uh, opportunities to connect. And a lot of what she'll do, um, a lot of what some of the top coaches do is sometimes they will write a post and they'll just leave it at that. Sometimes they'll write a post and they'll say, has this ever happened to you? Or how would you feel if you went through the same thing? To kind of as a, to try to get people to communicate with her and open up with her and relate to her. Again, it's all your choice. This is, this is your business. You're the CEO. You play it how you want to play it. And then I just, I already had alluded to this prior, but before sharing your story, ask yourself, will it inspire someone? If it will, then do it. If it won't, stop. Will this story make a difference in someone's life? Oh, I need an apostrophe there. Sorry. And am I being real and authentic? That's the key. Um, because people can tell if you're being honest, if you're being yourself. Okay. Oh, well, this isn't good. I'm sorry. Sorry that that looks like that. So if you want practice telling your story, read it out loud to yourself because that will help you to feel comfortable saying it, saying it in your head, and um, see if it's really how you would say it um, if you were talking to someone one-on-one. -on -one. Film yourself telling your story and then watch it. Um, getting comfortable with yourself on video takes some practice, but it's, highly, uh, it's a highly um, sought after skill when you become a coach. And then share your story. So a lot of times I will have um, a post written and I'll share it with Aaron. Aaron's my success partner. So we constantly, I, I'm, I, how, would, how's, how does this sound? Um, what it, you word it this way or how can I address this issue? And so we kind of help each other come up with good ways to post things. Um, again, you can tell your story on a team call. This is a good, safe place where you know that um, you can tell your story and get used to being in front of people and on the spot. Um, on social media, like we talked about, at a Super Saturday, which we'll talk about. Super Saturdays are um, a quarterly meeting of all beach body coaches and friends, and it's a great way where we um, come together and do team building activities, and they do have speakers there. Um, and then again, the key is to be relatable and have people, um, you know, understand you and um, and appreciate you. So the bottom line is that. I know a lot of us are introverts and a lot of us are not prideful, but self-promotion is essential to be a girl boss. Even quiet women, quiet girls, it doesn't matter. Self-promotion is key. Don't feel bad about it. I, I've had several of um, my downline or even my uh, challengers who will send me these pictures, these before and afters. And I'll be like, you need to post this. And this is amazing. And uh, one of mine in particular still won't. She just doesn't feel comfortable with it. And I'm like, you, you look amazing. This is great. You know, it's self-promotion. You know, you can show these things to us. We'll appreciate it. We think this is great because this is showing everyone that this, that this stuff works. Um, so it's all about self-promotion. And then there are five tips that I want everyone to try to focus on is, number one, focus on your tribe. Um, and your tribe is your people who, you know, like minds tend to communicate <laughs> and stick together. 
scheduled boldness and bravery. I'm going to get into that. Breadcrumbing. Again, I'm driving this point home, guys. Set boundaries. <laughs> this is you, Erin. And not everything is a conversation, and that's okay. And I've got a great quote for that later. Okay. Focusing on your tribe. I want everyone to repeat after me. Not everyone will like you or the things that you have to say. And that is okay. It doesn't matter. People will be jealous of you. People will be naysayers. People will hate you. People will talk about you. And I don't care. It's fine. This is who you are. You've got a, a tribe of people who 100% support you and 100% love you. And everyone else can sit back and watch you kick ass. That's what it is. So once you realize that you don't need or even want everyone to like you, you're gonna be free, you're gonna feel free to really dig in and focus on your niche, your brand. And everybody has a brand. Um, think about who you wanna to relate to when you're making your post. For me, it's, you know, it's postpartum moms who um, had complicated pregnancies and were depressed afterwards and didn't recognize themselves afterwards. Um, I'm a preemie mom. I, you know, I went through the NICU and the PICU with my second son. So that's my brand that I try to um, appeal to, and all of you have it. Um, so then once you focus on your tribe, you're going to start to feel a deeper connection with people since they get you and they genuine, and then these genuine relationships are going to start to build because that's what this whole thing is about, right? Building relationships. I'm not going to just start talking. I just actually started talking to a woman today or maybe it was yesterday. I, um, posted a, um, size ad in, um, one of our Hereford zone groups. And she personally messaged me. And before we talked about anything, she told me about her kids and how it's hard to work out at home because she has a child with special needs who was born at 26 weeks. And I said, whoa, I have a 28-weeker who's now five. And we talked about the NICU and we talked about the PICU. We talked about everything that we'd gone through. And then, like, you know, you know, 18 hours later, then she says, hey, tell me about 21 Day Fix. So you have to start to develop these genuine relations with people. And I really honestly enjoyed talking with her because she felt alone that she had never met another preemie mom. So it was just really, it was good to share that with her. Okay. So scheduling boldness and bravery. There are some days that you just don't want to do it. There are some days that you just don't feel confident. Then don't post on the, that day about something that's, um, um, you know, sacred to you or something that's sensitive to you. Wait. So work on those raw posts that you have for a week or two or three, and then wait until you feel especially brave and you're just going to do it. You're saying, you know what? I'm just going to post this and this is what's going to happen. And I feel brave about it. And th that's where you're going to schedule your boldness because it doesn't have to be all the time every day. Do it when you feel especially brave and strong. And then we, you know, breadcrumbing again. So we already talked about that. All right. Setting boundaries. So transparency does not mean that you're an open book to total strangers. There are certain aspects of your life that you may never feel comfortable sharing, and that's fine. And you don't have to share every single solitary part of your life. That's not what this is meant to be. Um, there's a difference between being an open book and being open about your journeys and struggles because we all have journeys and we all have a journey and we all have struggles. And if you feel comfortable posting them, that's great because part of your growth and part of how you're going to relate to people and how they're going to trust you is for you to be a little personal and get into some of your you know struggles because not everyone's perfect but remember and this is the other kind of double-edged sword to this is that you are the ceo so act like one um, live your life responsibly and when you post if you want to rant and rave and complain do it privately do it on Team Inspiration page. Do it with your success partner. Do it in a private group. So that way we can all problem solve together and we can keep that um, within our group. Because remember, people are watching you. Um, you are a role model. You now are someone who people are looking to to see if you're being accountable to yourself and to others. So you now kind of, you're like a parent. You, you know that people are watching you, so you have to be a, a good role model. And, um, and that's okay. Oh, two more to go. Sorry. I know we have 10 minutes. So not everything is a conversation. 
Sometimes we don't have the emotional capacity to deal with people. If someone posts something that's nasty, by all means, block them, um, personally message them, tell them that that's unacceptable because sometimes people will get nasty comments if they do. Again, you, you can either address it with them with a personal message or just block them and deal with it when you have the emotional right to do so. And then this is a really good argu or, um, saying, a quote that actually is in my neighbor's house. I went into her house and she's got this cute little wooden block and says, you don't have to attend every argument you're invited to. Sometimes people may get snippy. Sometimes people may be jealous. Sometimes people may say things that are a little quirky. Um, it's all about how you deal with it. And remember that grace under fire, you are a responsible CEO and this is your business and you handle it like a, a CEO would in a responsible manner. Um, and last but not least, this is all about thick skin, ladies, thick skin. Um, your story is personal, but don't take your feedback personally. We have to get thick skin because there will be people who may be against us and that's okay. And they may be even very close to you and your family, like, in my instance, um, which I won't get into. But anyway, you're going to inspire more people than who is hating you. So stop caring as much. This is a quote from Amy. Making a difference in this world is going to give you naysayers. They are, they are feeling things about themselves from you that they don't want to face, and it's not you. It's them and their own feelings. So empower people and share your vulnerabilities. And that's all. Do you guys have any questions? Or I know that was a lot, but I know that we may be in a time crunch. Erin, did you want me to upgrade this? It should be already upgraded. You should be good. Okay. So do you want me to just, I just clicked okay. Okay. And I'm gonna stop screen sharing if you want. Okay. So what do you guys think? Have, has anyone ever felt, um, anyone, anyone had any negative um, comments or, um, any issues that have come up yet that you've had to deal with? No, not yet. Not yet. I definitely think, well, first of all, that was awesome. I'm so glad we were able to record that. But um, I, I can definitely say if my experience, the post that I'm sharing something that um, is hard to share always gets so much attention. And more than I would ever expect. Like, oh, you know, I still haven't lost any weight from the baby and I'm like uh but if you turn it into you know like I'm still like how you're overcoming that turn everything into a positive somehow what you're learning from it then people are like oh me too I'm so glad you posted that like it, it it's way more um powerful than you think yeah definitely <clears throat> does anybody else have any questions or comments or and doesn't even have to be related to sharing your story it could be something completely topic. You know, that's what this Zoom is for. So if anybody has any questions or concerns or anything they want to bring up, just throw it at us because now's a really good time for us all to brainstorm and solve um, whatever issues anybody has. No! No comfortable no. sharing their story? I know we are showing you how to do it in Coach Basic too if you've been in there. Yeah, so Melanie and Shelly did great posts today. They were awesome. So awesome job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it. All right, well, I'm going to stop the recording so we can um, I'll post it tonight for everyone. And Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much again, Meg, for sharing that with, with all of us. Sure. Yep, anytime. Okay, so thanks. All right, guys, have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.